नमस्कार एंड वेलकम एवरीबडी फ्रॉम इंडिया एंड यूएस टू दिस लाइव वेबिनार नमस्कार एंड वेलकम एवरीबडी टू दिस लाइव वेबिनार ऑफ इरेक्टाइल डिस्फंक्शन एंड हेल्थ बिफोर वी स्टार्ट टुडे इज वेबिनार आई टेक दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी टू इंट्रोड्यूस अमेरिकन एकेडमी टू यू American Academy of Yoga and Meditation is not for profit organization based out of Memphis, USA. The academy is dedicated to education, learning and research in the field of yoga with the endeavor of complete wellness for all. Through a series of dialogue we bring to you the best in the field of education, healthcare uh, from America and uh, and India. um today's program is erectile dysfunction and health erectile dysfunction is a common condition world over studies show that one out of 10 men in india have this condition and it affects around 30 million men in america to know more about this condition and how yoga and other therapeutic uh, management can be done for this condition uh, we have a panel of experts with us today dr deepak jumani uh, dr uh, shambhu samaj samajdar they are our speakers uh, dr nilanjan sen gupta our chairperson and dr shantanu tripathi our chairperson i now invite uh, dr sen gupta to introduce our first speaker dr sanjay uh, dr deepak uh, jumani to all of us dr deepak um, can i please request you to please uh, switch on your camera professor uh, jumani yes am i the Thank first you. speaker or shambhu is the first speaker okay all right um so let me just uh, add dr samajdar to this screen so good good morning everybody for those who are in the united states and a very good evening for those who are in this eastern part of the world and shubho dol jatra and happy holi to all of you so in midst of this festive season and lockdown covid pandemic still raging we would be discussing a topic maybe a little bit away from covid refreshingly different i i may say but nonetheless is an important problem that is erectile dysfunction now as an endocrinologist i have been asked to chair the session but having said that uh dr jumani would be actually attesting to it if you take 100 cases of erectile dysfunction only about 5 to 6% would have endocrinopathy as an underlying cause a great majority of causes would be psychiatric and psychogenic there may be certain other medical causes metabolic causes as well as neurologic causes which some of them are eminently treatable a few of them are unfortunately not and that part thing aside the endocrinologic causes metabolic causes vascular causes one important probably reversible cause of erect and psychiatric causes one eminently reversible cause of erectile dysfunction may be those which are iatrogenic or drug induced now is the age of polypharmacy we have to use many drugs for many conditions especially the chronic conditions in like in my practice a person having diabetes hypertension dyslipidemia hyperuricemia so on and so forth are on a, a host of anti diabetic agents maybe a couple of anti hypertensive agents one or two lipid lowering agents uh, uh urate lowering therapy so on and so forth and some of them eminently certain antihypertensives 
certain antipsychotics, certain antidepressants can cause erectile dysfunction. Now, the point is that when it comes to drug-induced erectile dysfunction, unless you have a high index of suspicion, you won't be taking history, you won't be delving into the treatment of the patient. The patient is receiving, we sitting in front of you, and unnecessarily end up in doing a lot of investigations, even certain therapeutic interventions, which probably were uncalled for if the uh, drug-induced erectile dysfunction could be found out and adequately addressed. So to this, for the next 15 minutes, uh, we'll take us through to drug-induced erectile dysfunction, a very important practical part of the topic by Dr. Shambo Shamrat Shamajdar, who is a DM in clinical pharmacology, as well as a practicing consultant physician in the city of Kolkata, that is in the eastern part of India. So over to Dr. Shambo for your uh, talk. We are all uh, eagerly waiting to hear from you. Thank you very much, sir. It is really an honor for me to share this e dias with my mentor, my guide, Professor Shantanu Kumar Tripathi, sir, and Professor Nilanjun Shengupta, sir. Apart from that, also, it is a really honor for me to, to be uh, to present with Dr. Deepak Jumani, sir, who is a join in the field of erectile dysfunction, or rather we can say sexology. So my topic is drug-induced erectile dysfunction. So before going to the subject, I just want to share one uh, case that is a 36 year recently married type 2 diabetic admitted for CABG. So he was type suffering from diabetes for four years, smoker for 10 years, hypertensive for three years. There is a maternal history of death due to massive heart attack at the age of 54 years. Dyslipidemia since one year but not taking atorvastatin 20 milligram after marriage, that is for last six months. So these are the medication history, cetagliptin plus metformin 500 twice daily along with telmisartan 40 milligram. So there is a poor compliance with telmisartan also since marriage. So I, I just ask this particular patient after having the successful CABG, why you stop statin and you are not taking blood pressure medication regularly? So all of you will be surprised by his answer, but it, it is very common. He had searched in Google and find these results. And after getting these results, as after his marriage, he was suffering from erectile dysfunction. Unfortunately, He's, he had stopped taking his anti-cholesterol medicine, that is statin, and you can see what is the outcome. So it is very important to understand the actual enemy, not going through just Googling and getting answer will give you the proper knowledge. So you have to search for real evidences and what is the real evidences there is a good number of studies and this is one statin safety and associated adverse event uh, scientific statement from american heart association which clearly notify that there is no evidence that statin cause erectile dysfunction and also they mention the results of two recent meta-analysis of double blind rcts which suggests statin is not uh, impair erectile function. Indeed, it has some beneficial role in erectile function. And there was clearly mentioned that it has very minimal effects on steroidogenesis and that those effects are clinically 
not relevant. They might slightly reduce plasma testosterone, but they do not cause hypogonadism and their effect on erectile function is not adverse and could be beneficial. So this was the meta-analysis of different RCTs, which we can see that statins are associated with better erectile function as measured by the subjective measure of IIEF score. So before stopping medicine, it is very, very important to balance between benefits versus risk. Without that, if we stop medicine, it will be detrimental for the patient. So with, with that background, I am going to discuss on this in, uh, headings like neurovascular phenomenon behind erection, overview of relevant organic chemicals, what are the drugs that should be under vigilant eyes when the patient will come with erectile dysfunction, how to know about iatrogenicity, and we'll discuss one real life case. So neurovascular phenomenon. So we all know this anatomy that dorsal artery provides for engorgement of the glands during erection. The bulbo-urethral artery supplies the bulb and the corpus conjugation. Cavernous artery affects the tummy sense of the corpus cavernosum and thus is, it is responsible for erection. And cavernous artery gives off many helicin arteries that supply the trabecular erectile tissues and the sinusoids. And helicin arteries are contracted and tortuous in the placid states. So this structure, this diagram, will explain what happens in the flaccid penis and what happened in the erect penis. So in the flaccid state, what happens? The arterial vessels are constricted and venous vessels are non-compressed. So here you can see this is constricted and the venous vessels are not compressed. And what happens during the erection? The smooth muscle relaxation. So there is a smooth muscle relaxation in the trabeculae and the arterial vasculature results in increased blood flow. So the, there will be increased blood flow, which rapidly fills and dilates the cavernosal place. And that causes the venous outflow drop. Here we can see the compressed in the venous plexus and the large veins passing through the tunical duodenum. So nervous system is very important. As our professor Srinagupta sir had mentioned, the majority of cause relating to erectile dysfunction is related to the psychos, psychosis, psychological uh, origins. So brain and hypo, in the brain, hypothalamic and limbic pathways are the capture of that sensation. Then that that goes to sacral autonomic centers and cavernosal nerve parts of the autonomic nervous system has both sympathetic and parasympathetic fibers. They supply the corpora cavernosa and the corpus spongiosum to regulate the blood flow during erection and determinations. And there are some primary somatic nerve fibers, which is also called as dorsal nerve of the penis, a branch of pudeldal nerve they are primarily responsible for penile sensation. So autonomic nervous system is a key player in this activity. So parasympathetic nervous system sustaining and maintaining an erection via the entry receptor and sympathetic nervous system is responsible for ejaculation and detapitions by the alpha-1 receptor. So now coming to the next part, that is the, some relevant organic chemical. So this activity, erectile function, is also a action of balance, balance between some biochemical mediators. So the biochemical mediators, which are responsible for contraction, they are generally causing the flaccidity of the penis. What are they? The noradrenaline, endothelin, angiotensin II serotonin, prostanoids, and tumor necrosis factor alpha. So just think about some inflammatory states when there is a high level of TNF alpha that causes erectile dysfunction. Similarly, if the serotonin level is high, when we, we will talk about serotonin, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, so that cause erectile dysfunction. Just opposite which helps or promotes erection, 
those biochemicals are acetyl chlorine dopamine adenosine vip and so on so just think the drugs which blocks acetylcholine or anti acetylcholine activity like parasympatholytic drugs like drugs which has atropine like action they has a detrimental effect in erection so in the penile vessels and the smooth muscles of the corpora cavernosa the balance between the contractant and relaxant factors controls the degree of tone of the penile vasculature and of the smooth muscle this is in turn determines the functional state of the penis that means from detriments and uh, detamisense and flaccidity to tamisense and erection so this is overall we all know that by sexual uh, stimulation and uh, cavernous nerve there is a production of nitric oxide from the endothelial cells which helps to pro promote the activity of the guanylate cyclase so there will be more cyclic gmp production and that cyclic gmp is one of the key factor which decrease calcium and ultimately leads to smooth muscle relaxation and erection we, when we talk about the management of erectile dysfunction the phosphodiesterase e5 inhibition came out in that portion which inhibit the conversion or uh, termination of cyclic gmp uh, activity that means they degrade the cyclic gmp activity and that phosphodiesterase 5 if we inhibit then there will be more cyclic gmp activity and which causes smooth muscle relaxation so whether there is some role of testosterone in that already professor shengupta sir had told that 5% of erectile dysfunction cases needs endocrinologist opinion or endocrinological uh, management so there are some statements like that adding testosterone for a short time in case of low normal testosterone that may be helpful in some men so what drugs that should be we notice under our vigilant eyes among that some antihypertensive drugs is very important diuretics specifically the thiazides and spironolactone there are some mechanism by which thiazide cause smooth muscle cells constriction specifically vascular smooth muscle cell uh, constriction apart from that we all know about thiazide induced hypokalemia so that is also related with this erectile dysfunction and we all know that spironolactone and its effect like gynecomastia so similarly it affect erectile function sympatholytic drugs like methyl dopa clonidine and beta blockers like propranolol which is a non selective beta blocker they have a definite role in producing erectile dysfunction the beta blockers like newer generations more beta 1 selective like bisoprolol and nevivolol they are beneficial we all know that a property of nevivolol it produce nitric oxide so there are some paper which suggest that nevivolol like beta blockers can be beneficial in presence of erectile dysfunctions so uh, in one slide we had mentioned the importance of serotonin if there is increased level of serotonin that causes erectile dysfunction so antidepressants like selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors venlafaxine and tricyclic antidepressants they are responsible for erectile dysfunction and here the tricyclic antidepressants they have a inherent property of anticholinergism so as they have anticholinergic property that also increase the erectile dysfunction different antipsychotics both typical and atypical ht blockers initially it was thought that cimetidine but ranitidine and famotidine also has some case reports anti epileptics like valproate carbamazepine mood stabilizers like lithium the 5 alpha reductase inhibitors for finasteride dutasteride they all are responsible for erectile dysfunction with some good number of case reports and here i just want to emphasize that that one drug always we prescribe that domperidone with some ppis 
so as if we go back to our uh, slides here i am just want to focus this because this is very important that dopamine dopamine helps in relaxation so if we use something which blocks dopaminergic action so that will be generally promoting erectile dysfunction so indiscriminate use of domperidone or some other prokinetics should be prohibited so how to know atrogenicity whether this event this erectile dysfunction is due to drug so there is some simple rule whether there is a temporal relationship is positive that means when i am giving the drug and when the uh, event is occurring erectile dysfunction symptoms is occurring if this symptoms is occurring after the introduction of the drug then it can be possible Num number two whether there is some pharmacological possibility some mechanism that can explain this erectile dysfunction with some particular drug or not next is d challenge when i am just removing that drug de prescribing that particular drug whether it is corrected erectile dysfunction is corrected or not if it is corrected then possibly it is due to this particular drug then re challenge is very important here if we just reintroduce that particular drug and again which symptoms were, was gone again that reappear then it it can be due to that particular drug and there are some scoring systems like naranjo scale and who umc scale which can help to get the knowledge about the causality and there is a important thinking about this because erectile dysfunction is something which happens in here brain psychological so if i am assuming i have this type of erectile dysfunction due to this particular drug and i then it cause some psychological pressure and that can cause more erectile dysfunction so whether that is directly related with that particular drug or not we have to identify by double blind placebo control drug challenge or at least single blind placebo control drug challenge instead of the the patient should not know whether i am giving him the active drug or some placebo like vitamins then we can check after 5 days 7 days or 10 days whether the symptoms persist or not then we can establish the causality so this is a newer method so lastly i am coming into one real life case so 29 year male presented to our clinical pharmacology opd at school of tropical medicine he had erectile dysfunction for last two months married for last six months no other relevant medical history except migraine he has a history of urticaria and taking clemastin 10 mg which is a very potent antihistamine once daily for last three months and along with that practin 4 that means the cyproheptadine twice daily for one month the regular medic medicines are amitriptyline 25 mg once daily for migraine and pan d for last six months so it is important to understand the patient's problem so we have done one scoring system so uh, this is iief score 9 and this particular patient is suffering from moderate erectile dysfunction now this is a very important scoring system anti cholinergic burden scale score there are lots of drugs which are not anti cholinergic but they have some inherent anti cholinergic property so in this particular prescription the patient is on amitriptyline which has a high score that is 3 along with clemastin also so 3 plus 3 it is already 6 so it was there are there are uh, well number of studies which suggest if anticholinergic burden score is more than 3 that means that causes some anticholinergic property in our bodies so we all know if there is high anticholinergic burden then that will also lead to erectile dysfunction so what we done we just de prescribe clemastin and amitriptyline 
and we added pilastin and flunarigin for migraine asked to take antacid sos basis omit pandy so after one month he has no complaint regarding erectile dysfunction and iif 5 score was normal 22 so this is what i just want to mention and i just want to thank american academy of yoga and meditation for giving me this opportunity in this day today is dol jatra so we always pray to god that there is one very beautiful sloka gopi bhi bishtito natho khela et parameshwara loko jatra hitarthaya folgu danam karam maham folgum grihano devesho krida kautuko mangalai so bharthante sharirasya shikchaya chatra dolai so it is important to give color to every patient it is the right of our patients so for that sometimes we have to withdraw some medicines rationally that can help one male patient to be colorful so thank you thank you again over to you chairman sir chairperson sir thank you for your uh, thank you dr shambo for your very beautiful lecture which was quite elaborate yet quite comprehensive and short uh, do we take questions now or we'll keep it for the um, panel so I, I i think we will take the questions uh, at the end In of the, the session panel. Uh, so, i'd like so, uh, to remind the... sorry sir please continue yeah uh, please continue yeah so I'd like to uh, inform the viewers uh, that, that Dr. Shambhu uh, Samashdar is an MBBS MD, uh, DM Clinical Pharmacology, and he's also a postgraduate diploma in endocrine allergy and diabetes. Uh, please feel free to ask questions, type it in the chat box. We, have, we are publishing our uh, WhatsApp uh, number here. Uh, please do connect uh, with us on the WhatsApp number as well, and we will be taking the viewers' question towards the end of the uh, program. I would like to uh, also mention here that that our uh, today's this session's chair, Professor Nilanjan Singh, uh, is professor and head of Department of Endocrinology, NRS Medical College, Kolkata. So we've come to the end of the first session. I would like to invite our uh, uh, second panelist. Um, I'm, I'm going to invite our second panelist, the chairperson, Dr. Shantanu Tripathi, and our second speaker, Dr. Deepak Bhimani. Uh, a short intro introduction of um, uh, our chairperson for this session. Uh, Professor Shantanu Tripathi. Uh -oh. MD, uh, clinical pharmacology, senior clinical pharmacologist and academic dean at Netaji Subhash Medical College, Patna. He will be chairing the second session uh, uh, with the speaker, Dr. Uh, Deepak Jumani. Dr. De De Deepak Jumani uh, uh, deals in management of erectile dysfunction and novel markers in diagnosing erectile dysfunction. Uh, he's MD, American Board Certified Clinical Sexologist, Fellow of American College of Sexology, Fellow of Indian Academy of Medical Specialities, and Fellow of Council of Sex Education and Parenthood uh, International. I invite uh, Professor Tripathi now uh, to chair this session. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sir. It's always a great delight in... Uh, sharing a session where none other than Dr. Deepak Jumani would be a speaker. I have heard, I, ha I had the fortune to hear Dr. Jumani earlier. And uh, I must admit how absorbing it is. He is an authority in this area, in this field. And uh, Without uh, much ado, I would request Dr. Jumani to come up. 
and make his uh, presentation he will be talking on the topic managing erectile dysfunction thank you very so, much sir Dr. for Dr. Mani, please thank you very much for the sir for that wonderful introduction can i have my shared screen up please okay can you make it full screen yes sir please make it full screen uh if if uh, you go in the slide mode it will come into full screen sir yes Is we can okay see now? it full now. yes sir. we can see it full screen now please go ahead okay around the world people love they sing for love they dance for love they write poems they write legends for love they die for love they kill for love we are all born out of love in fact we are victims of love Love and sex are two sides of the same coin. Love does not have any expiry date. So sex also doesn't have any expiry date. But we are seeing a lot of sexual dysfunctions these times, especially in COVID times and even before. The reasons are multi multifactorial, which I shall elaborate to little detail. And what is more important today to understand is that whatever be the etiology of this main sexual dysfunctions in male, these are all manageable today not only with counseling with medications and with lifestyle modifications and we have a very beautiful our own own science which is yoga and meditations yoga is nothing else but union and union of what union of two people means one which is inside us and one which is existing outside and this along with meditations really helps us in curing majority of the medical issues which we see in our day to day life guru brahma guru vishnu guru I thank my teachers, Professor Dr. O. P. Kapoor, Dr. Prakash Kothari, and Dr. Sashank Joshi, and I beseech them to bless me always. This is our Prime Minister Modi. He introduced GST. Look at his hands are down. Then he told me to do something. See, my hands are up. So I shall offer my GST to all of you, and my GST to all of you is great sex therapy. I have some disclosures. I am not from Congress, BJP, or Aam Aadmi Party. I am not a follower of Asharam Bapu, Ramdev Baba, or Radhe Ma. I am not married to Indrani Mukherjee. I have no stakes in Vijay Mallya's calendars. I am a simple Indian Medical Association Knight, and I am passionate to educate the masses on the real science of sexuality. Sex is God made, but restrictions are man made. today we see rise in sexual dysfunctions be it in male or female our first study at km 56000 patients all were diabetics we found males had erectile dysfunctions early ejaculations and low sexual desire and females had low sexual desires along with depression which was seen in every patient whom we saw amongst the male sexual dysfunctions low desire erectile dysfunction premature ejaculations from the cluster of dysfunctions which we see in day to day life 
Now, let me give you some breaking news. 40% of men above 40 are having erectile dysfunction or are not satisfied with their sex life. 62% of women admitted that they were not satisfied in their sex life in a beautiful survey done. 50% of married men and women in the most developed country like Japan are living sexless life. Three out of five divorces are due to issues related to bedroom. This is an Indian high court study. During this COVID, we find impaired pulmonary hypodynamics, hemodynamics, endothelial dysfunction, along with psychological stress, all leading to erectile dysfunctions, including subclinical hypogonadism, which also COVID damages the testis because of which there is low fertility and all these things are adding brunt to the human beings today. Every male today has some or the other bedroom woes. We are finding it in more younger men today. Friends, love is a matter of chemistry and sex is a matter of physics. But science of intimacy is both chemistry and physics. Intimacy though is ageless, but you need strategies to ignite intimacy of both mind and body for getting optimum sexual pleasures. Erectile dysfunction has to be there for minimum six months and there should be a clinically significant distress and it should not be associated with mental disorder, stressors, medical problem or by use of any medical medication or substance use. This is a diagram which Dr. Shambhu explained beautifully. This is the vascular endothelium of the penile vas vascular system. The endothelial nitric oxide synthetase, which is formed in a normal endothelium, potentiates the chemical signaling molecule or the chemical currency of the cell, the nitric oxide, to enter into the corpora cavernosa smooth muscle cell and converts guanosine triphosphate into cyclic guanosine monophosphate with the help of an enzyme called guanylyl cyclase. This cyclic GMP through various protein kinase G mechanisms and others relaxes the smooth muscles of the corpora cavernosa and allows the blood to flow inside the penis. But sadly, this cyclic GMP hydrolyzes into 5-GMP with the help of another enzyme called phosphodiesterase 5. So if you look at this, number one thing which we need to understand is that if there is a problem of erectile dysfunction, the main thing is the dysfunction of the endothelium. And if you think at the therapeutic point of view, what a man needs is adequate amount of nitric oxide. He needs adequate amount of gonalyl cyclase. He needs cyclic GMP to be there in more bioavailable form. And he needs something to block this PD-5, which we have in the form of pharmacological drugs like PD-5 inhibitors, sildenafil, tadalafil, eudenafil, and verdenafil. Enough evidence to prove that erectile and endothelial dysfunctions in every metabolic syndrome is there, especially in diabetics. When there is an endothelial dysfunction, what we see, the, there is a structural change in the endothelium, which leads to vasoconstriction, increased platelet leukocyte additions, smooth muscle cell migration, and increased lipo lipid deposition and less clearing, clearance. So, the evidence that it is endothelial dysfunction is by the presence of endothelial microparticles in the penile vasculature. 70% of all men with erectile dysfunction have associated comorbid conditions, especially cardiovascular diseases. When I googled, I found 50% of male population above the age of 40 had erectile dysfunctions. And surprisingly, when I googled, I found Viagra had 196 million web pages and Aspirin had only 53 million web pages. Let me give you a little deeper perspective. He inside she, man inside woman, lad inside lady, male inside female, Adam inside madam. Men and women, though, are two halves of humanity. The point I want to make here is the problem is in the male or in the female especially when there are sexual dysfunctions or, or relationship issues, the solution will always lie in the couple. So always call the couple together when you're treating sexual dysfunctions in either male or female. 
This is very well explained by Dr. Shambhu. There are three dynamics. One is neurologically mediated increase in the penile arterial inflow. Then there is a relaxation of the cavernous or smooth muscle and restriction of the venous outflow from penis. This is the dynamics of erections. The, I call erectile dysfunction as nothing less than penile attack. And today's concept is that penis has now become the barometer of endothelial health. So if endothelial dysfunction occurs, we can diagnose it just by asking a history of erectile dysfunctions. How does the endothelial dysfunction occur or there is injury or death of the endothelium? Many, many hypotheses are there, which we learned in our medical college. It is usually due to activation of capsaicis. Sometimes it is due to environmental stress, such as oxidative stress, endoplasmic reticulum stress, metabolic stress, genotoxic, or there are many other uh, pathways of injury mediated by innate and adaptive immune systems. Enough studies to prove that endothelial derived nitric oxide is an anti atherosclerotic molecule and an anti thrombotic molecule. So, the importance of nitric oxide has to be stressed whenever we think of having good uh, relationship or having good sexual functions. So, erectile dysfunction is now the barometers of men's health, and the deadly quadrant are patients who are diabetic, hypertensive, obese, and dyslipidemic. Whatever uh, may be the uh, metabolic issues, ultimately they lead to endothelial dysfunctions and all these things appear like apoptosis, leukocyte adhesion, lipid deposition, vasoconstriction, vas uh, smooth muscle cell growth and thrombosis. All these ultimately lead to reduction in the penile vasculature and leading to erectile dysfunctions. The pathogenesis of erectile dysfunction in metabolic syndrome has to be understood. Increased food intake, genetic predisposability, reduced activity results in visceral obesity, reduces the testosterone in the body, produces insulin resistance, which produces dyslipidemia, also hyperglycemia, ultimately also leading to hypertension, endothelial dysfunction. And these patients develop erectile dysfunctions. And men with metabolic syndrome have impaired endothelial, this endothelial function has been proven with various studies. The metabolic syndrome is a biological time bomb, which includes insulin resistance, obesity, hypertension, triglycerides increase, and low levels of HDL. It is the very important cause of cardiac, sudden cardiac death, metabolic syndrome. And atherosclerosis is the main culprit. Components of metabolic syndrome include abdominal obesity, atherogenic dyslipidemia, raised blood pressure, insulin resistance with glucose intolerance. These all make our body as a pro-inflammatory state and pro-thrombotic state. It is associated lots of studies to prove with either angina, hypertension, diabetes, etc. All these inflammatory components of metabolic syndrome produce vascular dysfunctions, pro-inflammatory state and pro-thrombotic state has been proven. Diabetes, friends, is the sexual health tsunami of our century. It decreases in diabetic. There is decreased nitric oxide bioavailability and increased capillary basement membrane thickening. It is highly prevalent both in type 1 and type 2. And amongst the world, India and China are the major countries having high case, more number of cases of diabetes. So I call Chindia are the diabetes capital of the world. And erectile dysfunction is the commonest complications of diabetes type 2 in men. So, Chindia are the erectile dysfunction capital of the world. Hypertension, I have yet to come across a family in my practice who, in whose family there is not even one or two patients of hypertension. High blood pressure is a cause of erectile dysfunctions and antihypertensives like beta blockers, diuretics, centrally acting drugs all produce erectile dysfunctions. It has been known. So pathophysiology of hypertension is nothing but constriction of the vessels as well as increased vascular resistance. What uh, has to be done in patients with hypertension? Dr. Shambhu has beautifully explained. We need to give alternatives. The best among the hypertensive, if you have to give beta blockers, is nebivalol. If at all you have to give diuretics to your patients, indapamide is the best. And the best is ARBs are the ideal drugs to be given to patients in diabetes or in any other things uh, which uh, if you have potential of having sexual weakness in, in their life. Obesity is nothing but 
chronic progressive expensive epidemic with multiple etiol and how does obesity affect sexual dysfunctions it is associated with lack of enjoyment of sexual activity lack of desire difficulties in performing because of the paunch etc and avoidance of sexual and they have an avoidance behavior and sexual quality of life is impaired of course because of overweight we find there is decreased production of testosterone etc visceral obesity lot of inflammatory response microvascular disease leads to endothelial dysfunction also lead to testosterone deficiency ultimately leading to erectile dysfunctions masters and johnsons beautifully told about the male sexual response which begins with the desire leads to arousal which is erection ejaculation and resolutions so desire has to be there but dyslipidemia affects both desire as well as erections and we have a lot of studies to prove that low testosterone with obesity and metabolic syndrome contributes to sexual dysfunction and cardiovascular risk in men with type 2 diabetes androgen especially testosterone is responsible for the maintaining the penile tissue structure especially the, especially the tunica albuginea which is very important it maintains that so it is important to understand that we need androgens too the lessons to learn is there is a link between erectile dysfunction and vascular disease which is so strong that physicians are advised to consider men who present with erectile dysfunction but no diagnosis of heart disease as undiagnosed cardiovascular patients until proven otherwise the risk factors of erectile dysfunction includes conditions such as high blood pressure abnormally high lipids in elevated low hdl ldl cholesterol triglyceride obesity diabetes and smoking nitric oxide is the main important erectogenic chemical currency of our cells at the age of 60 years we have only 15% nitric oxide which it is exactly like testosterone it keeps on decreasing as we age so the importance of nitric oxide presence has to be understood and l arginine is a potent versatile amino acid metabolic amino acid which produces nitric oxide in our body and that is produced only if we have a normal endothelium now let me give you a newer perspective of it cardiovascular disease india this is an indian study with the turn of century we'll have the we'll become the leading cardiovascular disease will be the leading cause of death in india and indians develop coronary artery disease 10 years earlier than the other countries 50% of mor mortality in non communicable disease is due to cardiovascular disease and erectile dysfunction is the earliest marker of myocardial ischemia this has been proven so the missing link between ed and correct cardiovascular disease is erectile dysfunctions when you look at the normal course of atherosclerotic coronary cardiovascular disease endothelial dysfunctions or something in the cardiovascular disease process you would find there are no structural changes in the initial stage but once the pro disease progresses you find the changes so it is at this stage where we need to intervene and change his lifestyle and correct his metabolic syndrome and give him a good quality of life and prevent the retardation or retard the onset of critical events in his life if you look at the artery size the penile artery is the smallest coronary artery is slightly bigger carotid is slightly bigger than the coronary artery and femoral artery is the biggest and if 50% of the arteries get blocked due to atherosclerosis it will produce symptoms so if 50% of the penile artery gets blocked these patients will develop erectile dysfunction and as we know atherosclerosis is generalized the same amount of atherosclerosis in coronary artery will not occlude 50% of the coronary artery or 50% of the carotid artery or femoral artery thus will not produce symptoms related to coronary artery disease but we know that atherosclerosis is progressive sooner or later even the like penile artery the coronary artery might get 50% blocked and produce symptoms of coronary artery disease so the lessons to learn is because of the artery size this presence of erectile dysfunction if it is diagnosed early it can become a boon or a blessing in disguise to the treating physician and to the patients who can be Uh, treated counseled lifestyle modifications yoga meditations and retard the onset of critical events like myocardial ischemia or stroke in his life 
studies, Indian studies proved that the onset of erectile dysfunction preceded the symptoms of coronary artery disease by at least three years. So we have three years, a window period of curability where we can change the lifestyle of our patients, counsel him to quit smoking, advise him to do all the physical movements, uh, avoid sedentary lifestyle, yoga, meditation, etc. And, and retard the onset. So there is clear cut relationship of ED and subclinical cardiovascular disease. It has been proven beyond doubt. How do we manage? Now, this is the main part of my talk. First of all, rule out the psychogenic causes. In any patient who's 40 years and less and gets early morning erections in the past 8 to 10 days, even once or twice, he is normal. The erectile dysfunction which he has is situational or psychogenic. He does not need PD-5 inhibitors. All he needs is counseling. So you rule out the psychogenic causes of this. Then you advise him on smoking, diet, exercise, control his blood pressure, lipids, HbA1c to be less than 7, eye, feet and oral hygiene to be examined every time when the patient comes to you. Put them on guardian drugs like aspirin, ACE inhibitors and statins. Work them up for heart and give them certain drugs. Also check his cremastric reflex and bulbocavernous reflex to rule out neurogenic cause. I feed the take home messages every patient about 30 who has a history of metabolic syndrome. Please examine his retina. Please examine his feet and also look at the oral hygiene for the signs of periodontitis. These will give you a clinching diagnosis of er erectile dysfunction. We also give our patients 50 milligrams of, of sildenafil and ask him to uh, wait in the clinic and think erotic. And if he gets erection, he has psychogenic erectile dysfunction. Or sometimes we even give intracavernous vasoactive drugs like papaverine and also do this uh, office test. Additional tests we do are serum testosterone, free total, sex hormone binding globulin, thyroid, FSH, LH, prolactin, sonography of the scrotum and Doppler studies, vitamin D estimation, digital rectal examinations, and we have novel tests like Regiscan, which we do. Some new markers for to clinching erectile. See, we are all embarrassed to talk to our patients. Patients don't tell us, we don't talk to them. But this, there are certain markers without even asking your patients, you can diagnose these patients having erectile dysfunctions. One is do a simple CBC. And the platelet lymphocyte ratio, if the platelet lymphocyte ratio is 104, he does not have erectile dysfunction. But if it is 105 and above, he's got mild. If he's got 116 and above, he's got moderate. And if he's got 136 and above, he's got severe erectile dysfunction. So by just looking at a CBC report and doing a mental calculation, you can diagnose the severity of erectile dysfunction this patient has. And then when you confront with him, you will become a Sai Baba for him. He will bless you. He will be, he was, he was waiting for you to initiate a dialogue on this aspect of his life. Neutrophil and lymphocyte ratio, which we see in COVID increasing because it's a pro-inflammatory state, also gives us information of identifying men with severe erectile dysfunctions. Hypovitaminosis D is one of the best markers. All patients who have low vitamin D, about 30, 40, they do have erectile dysfunctions. Estradiol is one of the risk factor for organic erectile dysfunction. So serum estradiol can also give you a, a, a mark, a, a indication that this patient is having erectile dysfunctions. A hand dynamometer in patients who, this is a very simple gadget. Ask him to press it. If it is more than 80, he does not have erectile dysfunction. But if he's got 80 and less, he definitely has erectile dysfunctions. Every diabetic has advanced glycated end products. And now we have a beautiful gadget. We just keep a hand on, his, uh, on this machine and you can get AGE readings through skin autofluorescence. You can diagnose patients having erectile dysfunction, especially in diabetics. Endocan, simple blood test, which cost only 20 rupees. The significance is that this is increased in patients with erectile dysfunction. I work for Bombay police and I look at the belts. The dropping belt sign is nothing but cardiovascular disease below the belt. That means see, they all have penile attack. They all have erectile dysfunctions. A diagonal earlobe crease 
it's a cause of frank sign which is present in angina it's published in negm researcher we have studied the significance of this with erectile dysfunction now how you treat erectile dysfunction having diagnosed whether it is uh, metabolic cause hormonal cause or whether it is due to neurological cause or whether it is psychogenic how do we treat it we have three modalities the oral drugs is the first modality but it should go along with counseling and lifestyle measures second is injection of papaverin inside the intracavernous tissue and counseling and lifestyle measures if that fail we advise our patients to take vacuum therapy in those patients who cannot tolerate drugs or injections we advise them to take vacuum therapy along with counseling and lifestyle if all these fail we in, we have intra intra urethral injections of prost prostaglandins but very rarely being used because there's a lot of numbness and pain etc and if all these fail we send our patients to the andro surgeons who treat them with penile implants but counseling and lifestyle measures form the mainstay of treatment for erectile dysfunction in them we have four pd5 inhibitors sildenafil vardenafil tadalafil and unilafil amongst all the faster onset of action and shorter duration of action is vardenafil which minimizes the adverse events compared to tadalafil which has a half life of 17 hours we have all four pd5 inhibitors having a variety of onset of uh, actions with uh, durations of actions all have side effects of flushing headache nasal congestion diz dizziness dyspepsia visual disturbance priapism in some cases malignant melanoma and they are all contraindicated with nitrates or recent cardiovascular event or patients having hypotension or having uh, any penile defect anatomical defect injuries certain anemias leukemias and myelomas the best is 12 weeks treatment of tadalafil low dose b 10 mg to diabetics even if their hb1c is above 9 or even if they have hypertension or even if they have prostatic hypertrophy or dyslipidemia these patients according to the studies and in our private practice we see low dose 5 or 10 mg of tadalafil is beneficial to them to be given for a longer time so any patients of dyslipidemia who just don't respond to sildenafil add atorvastatin about 10 mg or 20 mg minimum 20 mg in these patients along with sildenafil it works much better instead of just giving them plain sildenafil novel treatments include low intensity extracorporeal shock wave therapy with prps have been tried for mild to moderate erectile dysfunction but severe erectile dysfunction it doesn't work but what we find is 30 to 40% patients don't respond to medical line of treatment they are non responders so how do we convert these non responders to responders and why pd5 inhibitors fail because they don't take it in the proper dose they take it just 5 to 10 minutes before meals or after meals or 5 minutes 10 minutes before the act and they don't stimulate themselves so these are the reasons why pd5 inhibitors fail so to these patients whom we cannot who do not respond to the regular pd5 inhibitors we need to give them chronic therapy which is now proven to be a valid choice we have many other treatments like all i have explained to you and these are the single penile implants with the three piece penile implants the vacuum therapy injection of intracavernous drugs etc one thing we need to understand as dr niranjan uh, dr sen gupta beautifully mentioned all diabetics have low testosterone and we need to replace testosterone but there is a, there is a hitch in this we cannot give testosterone to younger patients because of the fear of azospermia we cannot give testosterone to older patients because we fear they may get um, uh, prostatic cancer or prostatic issues or cancers etc we have got a lot of things to give in in this thing but we need to watch for azospermia in young patients heart failure and prostate issues in the elderly we have now films of sildenafil which are available tadalafil films which just keep it on the tongue and they act very fast there are new drugs which are soon coming in the market avanafil will be launched in a month or two 100 mg can be the action is within 15 minutes and this drug can also be given to patients who are on nitrates the only thing what we need to understand is that nitrates has to be stopped on that day so avanafil will be a boon we have slx2101 will be come mirodonafil will be there lodonafil all have got longer uh, duration of action around 48 hours etc so we have 
a glycerol trinitrate ointment also available today which has been tried beautiful results of it and indians have now produced transdermal gel of sildenafil citrate has been tried proven to be very good in patients with erectile dysfunctions but what is more promising today are phytoneutraceuticals the combination of l arginine with fenugreek l arginine we all know is going to produce nitric oxide which is required to initiate the erectogenic mechanism fenugreek has got a effect like free testosterone which increases the desire so l arginine and fenugreek combination is fantastic very safe and beautiful compliance with tc l arginine and l citrulline has been tried fenugreek increases the free testosterone because it has got a chemical structure similar to testosterone what it does is when you take fenugreek in saponized form it displaces the globulin bound and increases the free testosterone more and the patient start developing desire and when they have the desire they have intercourse and more intercourse they form there is endogenous testosterone productions but we need to understand one thing is erectile dysfunction a symptom or is it a disease if it is a symptom patients will need erection on demand so pharmacotherapy is the drug of choice or or the treatment of choice but if you consider it to be disease we need to cure them and for that we have regenerative medicines so what's new in the treatment of erectile dysfunctions we knew stem cells our body is made up of drugs not drugs but cells so cells are the only one which can change the other cells due to certain triggers so if these cells are stimulated with certain growth factors they can change the damaged cells and make it all right the regenerative medicines revolution is upon us like iron and steel to the industrial revolutions microchip to the technology revolutions stem cells will be the driving force of this next revolutions if power be defined as the ability to do anything and create anything the stem cell is the most powerful known life force today the future all these therapies which are there future they'll produce therapeutic angiogenesis neural protections and regeneration we see in patients who been operated for prostate radical prostate they have permanent erectile dysfunction patients who been operated for peyronie's disease they also have so we we need to understand that these therapies are going to even protect their nerves and also regenerate them so the emerging tools are we have embryonic stem cells we have adipose derived stem cells we have bone marrow derived stem cells and we have mesenchymal stem cells the beautiful studies have been done patients who had no treatment with medical uh, medical drugs they improved seven six out of seven regained erections within 3 months so what else you need so the current status of stem cell therapy is that it is still under the scanner but the results of certain clinical trials which are held which are genuine have proven that it has got positive effects on these things so these stem cells can also now new concept is having blue light what they did is the scientists in swiss federal institute of technology injected rats with dna and caused erections within 30 seconds 37 seconds when they exposed them to blue lights so blue light has got certain light sensitivity which improves the erectogenic mechanisms so my advice to all of you who are diabetologists or who have good patients of erectile dysfunction please put blue lights in your clinic so the patients will be very happy nanotechnology a newer technology which is now booming lots of studies being done a small amount of drug making a beautiful result much better than giving even 100 mg of sildenafil has been studied So the novel approach is giving light controllable nitric oxide donors or nano formulations they improve erectile dysfunctions growth factors vascular endothelial growth factor injections and adeno associated virus mediated vgf gene therapy it not only prevents but it also reverses the existing even venogenic erectile dysfunction h maxi k gene dr elward melman and chris did study long time back and they cured the patients of erectile dysfunction these are the novel mark novel ta- molecular targets for treatments i'll not go into the detail all said and done stem cell gene cell and nanoparticles are the promise of today which will really see the bright side of the day in the near future so in pharmacotherapy we have all these new things in regenerative therapies we have all these things which we can try and give them a cure so some landmark study which is there one good study which is which is going to be a promise 
is nothing but elevated pigment epithelium derived factor which induces erectile dysfunction only in diabetic patients not in other patients and due to the interruption of the akt hst 90 beta enos complex so if you block this pigment study showed that pedf blocker can improve endothelial dysfunctions it will not only cure his ed but also help in reducing his hyperglycemia dyslipidemia hypertension etc so his endothelium only will improve and his functions will be restored but it needs robust studies which we are still lacking but a beautiful study which i felt now let me give you the last part of my talk a different perspective this is the most beautiful woman in the history of mankind she was so beautiful that she could attract any man to have sex with her she was none other than greek goddess of love beauty and sexuality and her name is aphrodite on whose name aphrodisias came now what did she do to lure everybody to have sex with her what was their inner body did she go to any parlor did she undergo bariatric surgery did she show, take any medications no the secret lay in the diet of the metabolic super foods what she had and this food is available to all of us today we have got six cities across the world where people are living for more than 100 years these are called longevity hotspots where the average life of people is more than 100 years dan butner a new uh, national geographic scientist went and stayed in this and he found out what was the reason why they were living more and the reason was they had uh, beautiful lifestyle modifications they were physically active etc and these are called as blue zones please read it on the net the blue zones of dan butner so we are also going to live more so how do we want to live 60 plus gifted years do we want to live in being diseased depressed sexually starved or dependent unhappy or mutually or emotionally crippled so how do we want the choices with us we need to bridge the gap between the lifespan and health span our lifespan is more but health span is little less so what is the answer answer is lifestyle we may be hindu muslim sikhs whatever but having a better health span along with the lifespan is having lifestyle modification we should we should make it our religion we should be having plant based food exercise for 150 minutes per week six to eight hours medication avoid smoking alcohol reduce stress with either yoga or meditation psychosocial attachments supplements like n-arginine and fenugreek etc all foods which will which are responsible for good sexual fitness are all red colored fruits red colored vegetables green vegetables cows ghee milk garlic onion ginger sesame seed flax seed saffron oats mushroom avocados vanilla dark chocolates almonds walnuts dates and honey white of the boiled egg and fish avoid sos this is very important what is sos after the age of 30 if you want to be sexually fit please avoid sos the first s is salt excess of salt o is oil third is sugar these three will keep your sex life rocking all the time dark chocolates contain phenylalanine which is an amino acid which is a mood booster mediterranean diet has been tried and patients have improved in their erectile functions they don't need pd5 inhibitors so need to work out sleep sleep is very much important we did a study in JJ hospital amongst the doctors. We found they were sleep deprived. And what was the, how did we find out? We through, with the help of orchidometer, we found out that the testicular sizes had reduced to 15 ml. And if the size of the test is reduced, the hormones and the functions also will be rest. So the last part of my talk is ethical perspective. Loneliness and isolation are again the risk of coronary heart disease, we all know. Diabetes today, DPP studies have proven that without drugs, just by diet and exercise has been, metformin has also been proven to improve endothelial health and produce good results in erectile dysfunctions. SGLT2 inhibitors by its class properties reduces weight, reduces hyperglycemia, dyslipidemia and also very helpful in patients getting physiological erections. If your diabetics get metformin and SGLT2 inhibitors, he does not need PD5 inhibitors. He can just become all right normally like that. Bariatric surgery has been proven to reverse diabetes. We have Dr. Taylor's and, and direct trial which has proven to be reversing diabetes. My friend Paresh Tisdona studied and he found that type 2 diabetes was reversed by treating patients with injectable testosterone for one year. And this is how even diabetes can be reversed. 
Dean Ornish proved that coronary artery diseases can be reversed with lifestyle because every risk factor is modifiable today, whatever be the risk factor. And all we lack is in the healthy diet which we are lacking. We have got every other thing under control. So even genetic diseases can be modified with lifestyle measures. So what we need to think and understand is Cleveland Clinic in their, in their study proved that nutritional intervention will not only halt the coronary artery disease and also reverse the coronary artery. This they proved with the uh, perfusion scan and looked at such a huge plaque which was opened up just by nutritional intervention and no giving, putting any stents, etc. So the doctor of the future will no longer treat human frame with drugs, but rather cure and prevent disease with nutrition. Effectiveness of this is up. So the key to having good sexual life is for good sex, avoid salt, sugar, good sleep, avoid smoking, avoid stress, have good sunlight and avoid sedentary behavior. Avoid SOS, which I have already told you. Insulin resistance is the mother of all the problems. Obesity is the grandmother. Avoid smoking, use different positions, but rather than using 64 different partners, Try which position suit you. The most important, my most important part of my talk for this association is sex therapy for the 21st century. There are five emerging directions. One is mindfulness based interventions, psychotherapy interventions over medications, inclusivity, couples perspective and changing attitudes towards sex. How does yoga help in managing erectile disease? It increases your overall level of energy and vitality. It significantly develops lower body strength and flexibility. It tones your legs and buttocks, especially Matsayana, Pashyamotsana, uh, Shira, Shavasana, Shirsasana, Vajroli Asan, Mudra Asan. These are all beautiful things, even for controlling diabetes. Vajroli Mudra, I would, I wish I could explain more because of the positive of time. Ashwini Mudra, Ashwa means horse. Horses never vomit. They empty their stomach at least dozen times. They have good rectum control. Ashwini Mudra is nothing but relaxing and contracting the anal sphincter. It is fantastic. One simple pose which I would like couples to understand is sit in a comfortable position facing away from each other with their backs straight and one inhales the second partner exhales and just do this for 10 breaths three times and this will increase the quality of relationship and also produce romantic attraction it will improve intimacy and sex drive increase communication and reduce stress etc enough studies to prove that yoga helps in male sexual functioning mindfulness meditation also helps do some relaxation technique, be erotically intelligent, look at your partner's inner beauty, change yourself, don't change your spouse, explore your partner's body as you have seen it for the first time, try new things in bed, don't be afraid of asking questions, express spontaneity when you are bed. A hero without her is zero. So you need to understand the importance of your partner. Husbands watch porn, wives are working in the kitchen, that's the wrong thing to do. Bedroom is used for everything else except sex. The bedroom ethics is nothing but you must use your bedroom only for sleep and sex. We ignore females' emotions so much and we use them, we ejaculate and turn ourselves on the other side and sleep. There is no afterplay. We use them as a sleeping pill. This should be, this should be avoided. Women are totally, absolutely, persistently disregarded and we don't have any consideration of our satisfaction. Mutual satisfaction is the benchmark because according to Kama Sutra, Samabhog means equal joy is very important. A woman always wishes, love me till my heart stops. There's a gender bias. We give hormones to our male patients, testosterone in and out. But in women, we are scared. We don't give them. Women does not feel good. They don't have the thrill. They did less orgasm, no lubrication. A woman without sexual hormones feels like a Ferrari without fuel. So give her hormones. Nothing wrong in that. Stop conventional intercourse. Regard your husband as a hero. Never give him any pressures to perform. And if be careless, fearless and playful in the bedroom. Hugging, I find couples don't hug each other. There is no concept of afterplay. Please understand, a woman is a masterpiece of God. Feminism needs to be adored, admired, trusted and respected. My take home message is that the onus of sexual fitness is with us. We must ask our patients. Patients will not ask us. We take a detailed history. 
ask them to have realistic expectations it's a shame for a man to grow old without seeing the beauty and strength of which his body is capable of your body is capable of changing anything and everything we have all pd5 inhibitors but they don't increase the desire 30 to 40% are non responders to the baksha is testosterone but we need to give it with caution because of the fear of azuspermia heart failure and prostate issues so the raja of all is cell based therapy yoga and meditation and lifestyle modification all lifestyle diseases can be reversed love your body avoid salt oil and sugars have a regular rhythm of sex life with yoga be connected with all the time physical intimacy and emotional intimacy are the true roots of love unless we love and are loved each one of us is alone and deeply lonely friends at any age wrinkles don't hurt try and cultivate your own garden your own partner your monogamous relationship is like a garden polygamous relationship is like a jungle so try and try and cultivate your own garden which is more important the best curative regenerative therapy is uh, uh, l-arginine fenugreek cell based therapies like stem cells yoga meditation and lifestyle modification we have so many things in our armamentarium to give for patients with erectile dysfunction that this is a symptom which can be cured for all whatever be the cause today erectile dysfunction is a erectile dysfunction friends if you have patients of erectile dysfunction please don't send them to quacks try and treat yourself try and study them properly ask them what is the reason how they feeling try and investigate them properly otherwise send them to good good sexologist he will see that he gets a good cure this is my book sex has no expiry date available on amazon my last slide ed is a tip of an iceberg is the earliest marker of coronary artery disease is endothelial dysfunctions low dose pd5 inhibitors and statins can halt endothelial dysfunctions l arginine supplements cell based therapies are boon lifestyle measures can reverse metabolic syndrome yoga and meditations improve sexual functions a heart that loves is always young age weight height are just numbers ed hence is a erectile dysfunction and if so sex really has no expiry date thank you all for your love i shall be happy to answer any questions you all have thank you uh, dr jumani uh, that was a very interesting talk uh, we have uh, five few questions let me just add a little bit of this um we have five few questions we have uh, time to address all the questions here yeah and i'm um, seeing a few questions in the box yeah hello so there is this Hello. question is diet important uh is is dietary habit important which i believe is already been answered uh, by dr jumani i think dr jumani has been has explicitly answered that the role of diet i think we can take another question by cycling leading to erectile dysfunction So, Dr. Jumani is there, or Dr. Shammo will take those. Bicycling, uh, bicycling was not his brief. So, would Shammo like to address or uh, bicycling and say erectile dysfunction? Yes, sir. Bicycling can be taken as a good exercise tool, so it can rather help in treating erectile dysfunction patient. there is obvious if some injury happen locally that is another issue but otherwise it is not a contraindication indications are like that so bicycling rather it is a good exercise aerobic exercise so it can help the patients who are suffering from erectile dysfunction yeah dr jumani wants to say something there was there were some patients who used to cycle and the saddle used to affect the perineum and there is to be compression of this nerves and these patients developed erectile dysfunctions so that saddle has to be comfortably placed it should not uh, press the perineum and the nerves concerned so there was a lot of patients who used to cycle especially the milkman and all and they did develop erectile dysfunction because of excess of cycling and the saddle on which they were sitting was not correct yeah exactly means done properly taking proper precautions cycling should not be bad but yes. one should one should take care that there is no local trauma to the 
external genitalia. That's it. Um, a, a few more questions here. Uh, what is the age of old age dysfunction? I think, well, there should not be any uniform cutoff. We can take it as 60. We can take it at 65 for males. In females, we have a dedicated menopause. In males, we do not have andropause. So I think the age will be open to question and may be debated. And as Dr. Jumani has said, that age should not be a bar. Means just because a person is old, you, you, can, you should not uh, you disregard can have his nine years. You can have sex age. from nine years to 90 years. So that, that's <laughs> it. So, but then uh, what do you do? Do you, do you define by old age? The question, the person who asks wants you to know. When you would call a patient old, that's also is very relative. Right, right. Um, so we do have a lot of questions, but just two, two more questions because we are running completely out of time. Can I, um, can I, yes, can I, put, can I put this way? that any yeah. of the old age phenomena or old age problem does not happen very dramatically. Okay. So it also has its own transition. So thereby it may be difficult, particularly when you talk of problems like uh, erectile dysfunction. So it, is, it, it would be very subjective and for some people it can happen at a relatively earlier age. And on the other hand, as Dr. Jumani was mentioning, that in some other cases it could be otherwise the problem might not be there, even in apparently elderly people by definition, okay, beyond 65 or so. So thereby, uh, it depends on what old age problem we are referring to. As such, the geriatric age group, there are clear uh, defined age when you call a geriatric age group, okay. It is 60, 60 plus, etc. But then, depending on the problem, health problem, it differs. Okay, only in the evening we are discussing about uh, menopausal uh, syndrome, and there also you find that in the Western culture, Western uh, population, the age for menopause is 50 or 51, while in case of Indian female, it is say 45 or 46. Okay, and there is also phenomenon like early menopause. So uh, it is a little tricky uh, when you talk of what is the critical age for old age problem. Thank you. Over. Right. Um, so there's this one question that is put up here: Is not able to maintain erection? Do I have ED? Um, by so I think yes. that is also being by answered. definition yes. Inability okay. to maintain or sustain an erection sufficient to cause inflammation or intercourse will be defined as erectile dysfunction, uh, maybe medically and legally. That's it. But when it comes to sexual assault or, or rape, the definition is different. Their minimal degree of penetration is tantamount to rape. And uh, the definition of rape has also, as per IPC, I'm not talking about in the United States, has changed in recent times. Any degree of penetration, even with finger or any instrument, is now tantamount to rape. Okay, sir. Uh, the question here we have is how long do I need to do medication uh, to, uh, to effectively address the question of erectile dysfunction? Dr. Jumani, please. Yeah. See, if he's, if he's uh, having any metabolic syndrome, my advice is we should try to uh, reverse the metabolic syndrome or bring it under control like hyperglycemia, hypertension, dyslipidemia, obesity. After that, we should see if he's got any vices like smoking, excess of alcohol, or he's on any drugs which are causing this. So he needs to correct all the causes of it. And then we can we can start him on low dose of PD inhibitors, especially Tadalafil, 10 mg, for at least three months. And we see these patients definitely improve. And they start getting new erections and they are able to have. And in case if they want to have still harder or rigid erections, they can take 10 mg more on the day when they are going to perform. 
so total they can take 20 mg on the day when they are performing but otherwise they can continue taking 10 mg of tadalafil uh, for a long time the longest we have seen patients have taken for 15 years no, no side effects ever there are studies also there have been proven cases also now what tadalafil does is it improves the endothelial dysfunction it is also helpful in patients who are having prostatic hypertrophy and it also gives good directions to their patients because of its long activity the long uh, uh, duration of action and many many times we are not predicting as to when we are going to have sex so the long half life helps in these patients who do not have a predictability of when to have sex so for them low dose fluid inhibitors for at least 3 months is very beneficial and along with that even preparation of l arginine and fenugreek which will uh, definitely help in producing the desire and enough nitric oxide which is deficient in their age uh, today is the uh, last question this is for dr samash that um, what about the over over the counter drugs especially in india what would you advise the over over the counter drugs OTC over okay. the counter. Yeah, yeah. So that is a huge problem in India, like all other uh, group of drugs. Regarding these also, over the counter drugs, uh, quite a lot used by our patients. What What is important? Uh, that is uh, always taught from our undergraduate days. While uh, seeing one angina patient in emergency, it is always important to ask the history. of taking some otc drugs specifically this sildenafil group of drugs because in angina what we use generally the nitrates and it is uh, sometimes we saw that that particular patient took uh, sildenafil group of drugs over the counter and if we use nitrate in that population that can land up with a huge uh, dangerous complications like severe hypotension so that is one very important issue and uh, we need to ask the patient's medication history apart from that yes lots of uh, these drugs are available from over the counters right um, so it is more important that you cannot discuss that the drugs are available over the counter only speaking it is over the counter dispensing most of these drugs are actually prescription only medicine but unfortunately because of lack of local control these prescription only medicines are dispensed without a prescription okay there are clear division between prescription only medicine and non prescription medicine which are otherwise in other countries called over the counter but the, most of the problems are caused by okay ignorant use of prescription only medicine and over the counter dispensing that is a prescription only medicine the most important harmful effect to young patient who who have got psychogenic erectile dysfunction they take viagra like drug from the chemist and they start getting unnecessary erection you know they think that is normal for them so they internalize a feeling that they need a tablet to have uh, erection that goes on in their mind for a long time and they this they, they think that's harmful for them right thank the, you so the much common, uh, the common over the counter drugs resulting in erectile dysfunction would be tpis h2rs and gonadotropin like those drugs they are right. quite often used without it okay thank right. you thank i'll have to so also leave uh, yeah thank, thank, thank you so much, much uh, everybody for this program this last last request for dr jumani uh we have got request from uh, women uh, viewers that let's do a special program uh, focused on ladies so we will definitely invite you again uh, to do a special program for them i wanted to demonstrate certain yogas you know because this was a association but because of paucity of time i could not do that right sir thank you everybody for this wonderful program and thank you good night for to everybody in india bye bye thank you thank you sir thank you thank you sir thank you very much thank you good day and a good night wherever you are yes sir